Who has the absolute best blood manipulation technique in all of anime? There are a bunch of characters that all use blood in some way, shape, or form in order to achieve their goals or defeat their opponents. And narrowed down to the best three users I think are a perfect representation of the blood ability as a whole, the three contestants are going to be analyzed and then eventually put to the test in a free-for-all battle to decide once and for all who is the best blood manipulator in anime. Hit the like button, subscribe, and let's start with our number one entry. She lied to you. She was protecting the last waterbender. What? Who? Me! In the Avatar series, the technique known as bloodbending is a specialized and rare variant of waterbending, allowing a highly advanced and expert waterbender to, for a time, take control of the fluids within another organism's body. This manipulation gives the bender full control of the victim's muscles, creating a master puppet relationship between the bender and any bent to their will. It's commonly referred to as the highest level of water bending and considered to be one of the darkest and most powerful bending abilities in history. By giving the bender complete access to the victim's motor skills, the users are capable of making their victims levitate in the air as if the bender was lifting ordinary water. Blood bending can knock its victims unconscious, launch them across short distances, or even, in the worst case scenarios, disrupt or even crush a victim's internal organs. It grants the obvious advantage of control over your victim's movements, but the highest level of bloodbenders can telepathically control their victims so subtly, it's impossible to realize they are in complete control of the flow of battle. The highest level of bloodbender can even, upon specific physical contact and ritual, remove a bender's connection to their chi, and thus, their bending as a whole entirely completely rendering a bender's ability useless unless restored by energy bending. Discovered by a waterbender named Hama after being detained in a Fire Nation prison and deprived of all water, she discovered that water, the liquid of life, is contained in every living being. In her duress, Hama learned to manipulate the fluids and others to escape, and eventually passed this technique along to Katara, the main female lead of the cast. Katara, a master waterbender in her own right, after learning everything she could from Hama, the old woman proposed to teach the young master bloodbending. Although initially refusing, she was tricked into being taught the technique in order to save her friends Sokka and Aang from unintentionally killing each other due to Hama's own bloodbending. Her fast mastery over bloodbending is the reason she'll be our representative today. In Chainsaw Man, the word devil is used to define a creature born from hell, conjured out of a collective fear or concept among the human race as a whole. Devils such as the Tomato Devil, due to not being universally feared throughout the population, would therefore be weak. While perhaps a devil known as the Car Devil, despite not being initially scary, can be seen as such due to car accidents or trauma. Because of this, Power, the Blood Devil, despite very few people being afraid of blood itself, the connotation surrounding blood, like gore and horror, influences her power significantly. In her original form as the Blood Devil, before becoming a human hybrid, also known as a fiend, Power claims other devils would flee just from her scent alone. Although, coming from Power, <laughs> Kind of hard to take her word on that. In her fiend form, she is at least capable of killing a bear on her own, as well as crushing the sea cucumber devil in one blow with a giant hammer of blood. Power is also shown fast enough to land a blow first on Denji, despite the latter trying to counterattack, and escape from Katana Man's vision before landing an uppercut he could not block. As the Blood Devil, Power has the ability to manipulate the blood in her body to form weapons. And because she's a devil, she naturally has the feat of regeneration through devouring other organisms' blood. Through direct contact, she can also manipulate others' blood. Whether this be offensive or defensive, Power acknowledges this is quite difficult. 
She has been shown creating a massive hammer, spears, and she can also store blood into bottles and turn them into traps later. Power's final advantage being the Blood Devil is that her regeneration is not only enhanced when drinking blood, she also acquires strength and defense buffs. And when in her full devil form, her blood manipulation seems almost infinite, able to generate thousands of blood swords and spears, using them to surround and defend herself, or launch them at enemies. A technique that was even powerful enough to halt Makama for a couple seconds. Something that makes Power, the Blood Devil, a super terrifying candidate. Blood manipulation is an inherited technique that is passed down in the Kamo clan, one of the three great families in Jujutsu society. This curse technique allows the user to control their own blood. Whether that blood be external or internal, this ability allows its user full control over its composition, plasma, red blood cells, literally every single aspect can be utilized as long as it belongs to the user. This creates a variety of usages in combat, such as external blood being hardened or sharpened for projectiles, like piercing blood, an attack that utilizes intense speed and attack power, or internal blood control, focusing on one's pulse rate and body temperature, gives themselves more energy and increases their average physical capabilities, like when using flowing red scale to heighten one's durability or awareness in battle. The main issue with blood manipulation as a curse technique is that it's completely dependent on the user's amount of blood, as too much blood loss will obviously result in death, meaning the user must plan ahead with bags of blood or get creative like dipping weapons in their blood and controlling those. However, this weakness has been completely voided out by our Jujutsu Kaisen representative, Shoso who, due to their unique physical makeup as a cursed object slash human hybrid, has advanced blood manipulation to a degree that the spirit is able to convert cursed energy into blood. This enables Choso to accomplish unheard of feats, such as unleashing a torrent wave of blood without any drawbacks in health or combat performance. And aside from this almost unlimited source of blood, his blood takes on a poisonous property that drains a victim's stamina, meaning even if physical damage from Choso's blood is healed, the poison can remain debilitating. For all of the crazy benefits Choso receives due to his unique existence, he also remains a competent fighter. His mastery over blood manipulation exudes from his ability to switch between usage styles, creating new ways to implement external or internal blood to fit whatever situation he finds himself in. Which is why, despite Kamo Noritoshi being the original introduction to blood manipulation, Choso has clearly taken over that spot as the poster boy of the cursed technique. With all of the pieces in play, it's time to decide who comes out on top as the best blood manipulator in history. All of the candidates are capable of doing severe damage to their enemies and have made great waves in their own series. Katara as a blood manipulator is able to take full control of the blood in others effortlessly, something that neither Choso or Power can manage at least not with intense focus and concentration. Both Power and Choso are completely dependent on their own blood sources. And while normally that would completely limit them in a long drawn out fight, as we've established, Choso has conquered this weakness. And while in fiend mode, Power is completely rendered useless once the human body begins to give out from blood loss. But in her full devil form, it seems this weakness is also conquered. In her full devil mode, Power was shown to be able to use as much blood was necessary to accomplish her goals, probably in a very similar way to Choso, where as long as she's got energy to go off of, she has blood to spare. It would seem Katara's main disadvantage here comes from the solid fact that she's a human going up against two supernatural entities. While Fiend Power, based off of what we've seen, probably isn't going to cause too much of a problem for either Choso or Katara. Something else to consider would be how well Katara's bloodbending fares in dismantling the other's blood attacks. Since Katara has full control over the blood of others, if this translates into Choso or Power's external blood attacks, Katara could just as easily take control of all their blood weapons and turn them against them. Unlimited blood doesn't mean much when anything you create 
can and will be used against you. Let alone, Katara's bloodbending can give her control over both Choso and Power's bodies, at the same time as dealing with all of those crazy blood attacks. So if Katara is able to restrain both Power and Choso, she can also stop them from landing or creating any attacks whatsoever. In fact, she can literally just cave them in from the inside and call it a day. The only person I think is able to abstain from this puppetry is Power, who while in her full devil mode, may not have the same physical structure as a human. No muscles or blood pumping. So if you want to claim Power's blood weapons would be vulnerable, perhaps her devil form wouldn't be. Unless, of course, you consider she might just be made of blood in general, in which case, big yikes. But just to be generous, we'll go with the fact that Power isn't susceptible to Bloodbending's puppetry. Regardless of blood attacks, Power can probably still physically win in a battle if she's in her devil state. While I doubt Power would be able to overcome someone like Choso in a melee fight, a mere human like Katara probably doesn't stand much of a chance against the devil. Choso is somewhat of an anomaly due to being fast enough to probably deliver lethal blows to the both of them, and when you consider his poison blood, even one small contact with Choso could spell disaster for you. I feel like if we were to put these all in a 1v1 setting, power up against the two of them, power would probably lose to Choso due to his higher experience level, and against Katara, while it's not that easy of a win for her, you could say if there were no holds barred, I would put my money on Katara winning more of the time than less of the time. So if we were to kick power out of the ring, that leaves us with both Choso and Katara. While granted, Katara may be able to stop every blood attack Choso sends her way, I think the Cursed Spirit has a knack of finding a way to overcome that blood bending. Blood manipulation as a curse technique with enough mastery and time, with blood bending just being mere puppetry and blood manipulation being the full control over blood composition, blood cells, plasma, everything that literally involves blood as a whole, it doesn't strike me as odd that I would say that blood manipulation is able to just completely override any kind of control Katara can kind of muster. With flowing red scales showing how much control Choso has over the entirety of his internal blood and his fluid control of the external blood he's able to just shapeshift and change into anything he needs, 150 years of being a cursed object has made Choso indomitable in this field. I feel fully comfortable saying that if it's just a battle of blood, Choso's blood manipulation comes out on top as not just the best blood manipulation in Jujutsu Kaisen, but in anime and manga as a whole. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you enjoyed this video, definitely hit the like button, subscribe for future content, and comment down below if there's any other powers or abilities you would want me to tell you who comes out on top in. Again, thank you so much for watching, appreciate you, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.